Now I gotta ride or die What's going on YouTube, just Jake here and welcome back to my channel for another GTA 5 video and in today's video we're going to be doing a build slash review on the brand new Dungiri Landstalker XL which was released with the Summertime DLC. Now to purchase this vehicle you are going to have to go to Southern San Andreas and it's going to cost you a pretty penny at 1.2 million dollars. Now that's a lot of fucking money for an SUV man, especially one that looks quite boring. To be honest it's nothing spectacular, it kind of just looks like an SUV and I don't really understand the justification in 1.2 million dollars for this really really don't get it you pay that for a good sports car you pay that for a good well a half decent supercar it is absolutely bonkers that this car costs 1.2 million dollars it is absolutely insane so because it is so expensive i'm hoping that we get some really really good customization you'd expect top tier customization from this car for that sort of price because over a million dollars for an SUV is absolutely ludicrous and um, yeah so without any further ado let's just crack on and hopefully we can get some good customization for this build so we are going to start with 100% body armor as always then we're going to go to the brakes and grab the race brakes for the bumper front bumpers and we don't even get that many options for front bumpers we only get five other options so this is the standard one pretty boring wow so it is literally just a splitter just splitters the bumper does not even change oh my days that is terrible that is awful i was holding high hopes for the customization for this car because of the price tag and the first customization we get is the bumpers and it's not even a bumper change it is literally just an add-on splitter it is that is disgusting rockstar what have you done i'll be I'll be shocked if anyone actually purchased this vehicle for any other reason than to customize it. And when you come to customize it, it looks like you're going to be very disappointed. Wow. And the worst thing is, I think it looks better without a splitter. Unbelievable. So next we have got the rear bumpers. So we do get the change the bumper at the rear, which is not overwhelmingly spectacular. Surprisingly enough, it is basically the same shape it just sort of like changes the design a little bit um yeah this is really bad so far we are gonna go with man what are we gonna go with let's go with a street bumper then we are gonna go to the engine we're gonna get the level 4 engine upgrade we've got the exhausts we do get a uh, quite a few exhaust options um that one looks weird because now it doesn't fit in the bumper see that looks really weird man because Maybe from this angle, it looks okay because obviously you, you don't usually see it from this low angle. But the exhausts don't even sit in them grooves. It's a lot lower than it really needs to be, which is very strange. Uh, that kind of works because obviously you've got the back boxes attached to it. So it kind of makes sense. But it's just these ones where you can just see the tip and they're just really low and sunk into the car. It just really looks strange, man. I don't get it. Looks like this car was slapped together really, really quickly just to sort of get the numbers up because that doesn't make sense. It's sunken right inside the car and it's sitting a lot lower than it should do. Same with the large ovals. Same with the rounded jewel. Uh, these ones, the jewel large angled exhausts, sit a little bit closer to the uh, edge of the bumper but still very, very low and still sunk into the car and it just looks weird man i think the only ones looked that looked any good and the only ones that really made sense were these ones and that was because we could see the back box and because we could see the back box it, it made sense of why they sat a little bit lower but they do kind of meet well no they don't really do they even they're quite sunken back the next option we've got is the grill let's hopefully get something decent out of this so we've got the mesh grill. That kind of looks decent, but then it doesn't match the bottom bumper grill. That's, see, that's 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 the thing, man. If you're going to be able to change the the upper grill, you should be able to make it match with the bumper because now that looks out of place. See, I really like the mesh grill, but I won't get it because it doesn't match the bottom one. It just looks really fucking stupid. Same with the honeycomb. It's chrome. Why did why did they not make these options black? The same as the rear bump, uh, the rear bumper, the front bumper option. Really weird, man. 
<laughs> just don't get it. See, that looks okay, but then uh, again, it doesn't match the, the bumper. The only ones that work are the stock grill and the secondary stock grill, and that's only because you can see the honeycomb grill behind the main grill, and that's what matches the bottom part. It's just really weird, man. This car has just been not thought out at all. So next, we've got the option for the hood. Quite a few options for the hood. Um, some nice options by the looks of it. Them vents look quite nice. Um, not sure about the bolt-ons and the big intake, intake scoop. They kind of look, look a little bit out of place on this type of vehicle. Um, but the first few options were okay. Uh, those ones weren't too bad. The double vented hood, we'll go with them. So then we've got the option for the lights. Obviously, we'll go, go and grab the Xeon headlights. So then we do get a livery option for this car. And we've got the white stripes, the red stripes across the side, the flames, where are they? Flame livery. Flame livery, where are you? Oh, I see it. There it is. It's, it's camouflaged. It's a black flames. And because my car's black, you can't really see it. But if you look carefully, you can. Same goes for this one, the army camo that is black, but also my car is black, so you can't see it too clearly. Same goes for that one and another camo livery. And then we've got the blood splatter, which kind of looks ridiculous. It doesn't really look like blood splatter at all. It looks stupid, to be honest. Then we've got the Nova half ton or the Nove half ton. Damn, it's just getting worse, man. Same with the bigness, the dollar dollar. Oh my days. That's quite quirky, but still quite ridiculous. And that's it. The liveries are god awful. Wow, just like the car. Mirrors. We've got the plastic mirrors, which are the same shape, just plastic. Same mirrors again, but primary. So we're going to grab the primary mirrors. So obviously we do get an option for the respray. We are going to go primary color. We're going to go metallic. And for this one, I'm going to go with frost white. Uh, for the secondary color, we're also going to go metallic. Not sure what this is going to change. Oh, it is the grill. And also the little bit at the bottom of uh, the bumper. Which is weird. Don't get that. Uh, I think that's all it does change, but what I'm going to do... Oh, no, hang on. We've got also the trim around the side as well. Uh, let's go with Frost White again, see how that looks. Now, Frost White looks okay. I think it looks pretty decent when it's all colour-coded. Uh, the front grille has definitely got to be changed, though, because that looks ridiculous. And now, looking for all these, they are all white. What the hell? <laughs> oh, man, that's unbelievable. Even the uh, stock grill's white. Um... Damn. So out of all these, once they're color coded, I think the best looking one is this billet grill. So I'm going to grab that one instead of the secondary heavy duty. So then we do have a roof option. So we get the uh, the rails, the roof bars, and the vertical roof rack, the skis, the small roof basket, and the large roof rack. I'm going to go with a ski rack just because. Then we get a skirt option. So quite a few options for the skirts. Hopefully we can color code it and make it look a little bit nicer. So the chrome ridged edge step looks quite good. And the running boards actually look the best in my opinion, so I'm gonna go with those ones. For the suspension, I'm not gonna change it, but I'm gonna show you how low it goes. With the competition suspension, it does drop quite considerably. But like I said, I'm not gonna drop it because it is an SUV, it looks better when it's a little bit higher, so I'm gonna stay stock for the suspension. Transmission, we're gonna get the race transmission and the turbo tuning. For the wheels, I'm just gonna leave them as they are because these ones look quite decent, to be fair. And if I change the wheels, it's just like polishing a turd. It's not going to get any better looking. Um, because, like I said, the wheels we've got on at the moment are pretty decent. And I don't think we can improve upon them. And to finish off the build, we are going to go into the windows and purchase the light smoke window tint. So you go, my bros, as you pull out of LS Customs. This is the built Dundreary Landstalker XL. Now, I'm very disappointed with this car, to be honest. It's very, very expensive lacks a lot of customization and the customization that you can do is pretty poor um, you've got this weird antenna fin at the front of the car which i hate they're usually at the back um, i don't think i've ever seen a shark fin antenna right above the windscreen like that very very strange um, it, it looks okay for an suv don't get me wrong but it's definitely not worth 1.2 million dollars and I even I haven't even driven it yet and I can tell you it's not going to be worth that much money because it doesn't look that great customization is absolutely shocking 
And it's just the price, man. It's, who drives SUVs, really, in this game? I'm guessing not many. Um, but anyway, we're going to go for a drive and see how it performs just quickly. It's not going to be an intensive test. But it picks up speed okay. I mean, as you can see, we're now hitting 80 miles an hour. So this, it picks up speed quite nicely. Um, it feels quite solid in the turns. It feels like you can control it quite easily. Um, but at the end of the day, it's an SUV. And like I said already, who actually buys and drives SUVs? And if you was thinking about purchasing this, I definitely wouldn't do it. And I actually quite like SUVs, to be fair. Um, but this one has just such a high price tag. I, I just wouldn't be able to justify spending that much money. It looks very much like this one as well. It looks pretty much identical. It just looks like a, a newer version of that. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely mental. And I bet that one doesn't cost $1.2 million. Uh, like I said, it is probably going to be quite fast. But unless you do SUV races and you're an absolute massive fan of SUVs in this game, I wouldn't bother with this car, to be fair. Um, it wasn't even fun to customise. Really, really lacklustre and really, really disappointing, to be honest. Uh, I'm just glad I didn't actually spend any of my online money on it. And I'm glad that I'm in story mode on PC so I can actually mod it in and not waste any money on this piece of shit. But <laughs> it's just my opinion. You guys will make your own minds up on it. Um, but yeah, this is definitely not one for me. Uh, this is going to be the end of the video for this one. Hope you guys did enjoy this review on the Landstalker XL. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't already, want to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this. And until next time, guys, I'm out. Adios.